like that. Does this make a difference? Again, the main thing is that we want to have them coming through the front. If they don't, then that's obviously... Okay, that one is... Oh, shit! Right. Good friends, and welcome. Last week I put out my mountain bunker base that was quite well received. Thank you very much for all the feedback that I received. There were some people saying, hey, you know, it's going to fail if you pump up the amount of zombies. They're going to dig down. You're going to have a bad time. And I was thinking the same that maybe, but at the same time, maybe there are some fairly small changes I can make to it to allow it to stand up to a 64 concurrent, really late game stage. Let's say um, 700 or something. I'm going to bump up the day count here as well. And insane difficulty. Can we do that? I'm up to the challenge. That's what we're going to do this time. So one of the things I definitely have to do is steal things up here in the front because explosions, demolishers, just the sheer volume of zombies might just take it out otherwise. So everything has to be steel here. Probably not the whole corridor. I think I'm going to be able to avoid doing that. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, okay. yeah, that's uh, painful. But at least uh, these parts where the zombies will be congregating. What I'm also doing here is I am making it a little bit more difficult for them to get down so they have to actually walk or fall down because that helps to slow things down. So let's uh, do that as well. And I'm going to take out the floor here because I'm going to make this kind of, uh, let's see, something like this. And then I'm going to have two, oh, not that one. And again, all these are steel. And then I'm going to have two, something like this, just to help slow them down because I am a, the main concern I have is that the one corridor at the bottom is too small in order to be able to handle 64 Wongo. They'll just hook up and then they'll still start bashing things randomly and uh, have a bad time. So let's uh, do this like that. So what I've decided to do here is to put in four electric fences. Now I'm not going to have all of them active at the same time. I'm going to have to wire them up one uh, through four. The reason I want to have four is that I want to have one active at a time, more or less or something, because they're not going to last the whole, the whole night and I won't have an easy way to actually repair them. And uh, so I, I will individually link them up so I can switch on one, two, three, and four uh, as I hear, hopefully I hear that they're no longer working i can probably see it from here as well so i'm also going to put some arrow slits here and the reason i'm using arrow slits because that'll give me the opportunity to afterwards to at least do some repairs okay entry corridor has been upgraded Another thing I need is a way to replenish all the dart traps and the one on the back was a bit of a pain so uh, what i'm doing here i'm going to put down probably Let's do two of the vault doors. I hope I don't need them. I want to make it difficult enough such that uh, the let me see the zombies decide that, hey, there's no point of actually trying to get through the wall to actually get through and into here. Uh, maybe this one then has to be, let's see here. Yeah, maybe I just uh, steal these things up just to be absolutely sure that it's been minimized because they could theoretically decide that, hey, no, that might be a pretty good way in. And uh, this should give me access to replenish because the the dart traps here definitely on each side will not be sufficient otherwise because they will ru be running out. Just stocking up the ammo here. Another one there. Lock it. I put another chest here with just a bunch of darts just in case I need them, which I probably will. Make sure we close up here and close up there. So we're not quite done here. One thing more that I wanted to do is to see, can I make so I can actually shoot here because they will be coming in here. And I thought this is actually a pretty good uh, way to be shooting. So I thought, hey, let me uh, do something slightly different here. So I'm going to put in another arrow slit here. I wasn't intending on doing that on the original design, but something like this. And then if I put... Let's see, a uh, wedge tip or something, wedge, which something like that. I I'm trying to minimize the amount of space that I can actually see because that will minimize the amount of space that actually the zombies can see me in as well. Oh, maybe I even like that. See, does that give me, it does actually. If I hunker down here. 
So with the sniper rifle here, I put a bit of a wedge here so I can actually sort of move up and down a little bit, get a little bit of better view if I want to. See if I come down, yeah, I'll fall down. I can come up easily. Okay, this will allow me together with, and I'm gonna spec into probably, let's see, the penetrator and these ones. Yeah, I'm gonna go into this one. I'm gonna do a penetrator piercing shot so I can actually do a lot more penetration and uh, go through a bunch of the zombies as well with this sniper rifle. And the last thing we're looking at that we talked about last time is to find some way to actually do some looting here. So I'm gonna use these uh, wedges here and by basically placing them together you basically ensure that you have a gap so i can actually go up here and i can pick things up and also i should be able to just do some repairs if needed so i'm going to do that through this whole wall and i'm going to make sure it's all steel very important because we don't want to have things well we don't want to have things break we don't want the zombies to actually go through here and the good thing, this automatically allows me to repair this blade trap, which can probably come in handy because I think the blade traps definitely will have to be repaired and possibly even replaced during this whole night. Now, this is going to be enough. I really don't know. Well, let's start with that. And I think that should actually do it. Let's do it. Back. Oh, yep. Now it works. It definitely works. Uh, so that one is running. And yeah, I'm going to... Make sure I start a Blood Moon Horde here and we will see what happens. We'll first stand up here just to have a little bit of a look and then we'll probably go down and do some sniping and then uh, we'll see what we need to repair. Whew, time to take it back up. As you can see, insane difficulty and 64 concurrent zombies and why not? Let's put this up to Nightmare as well. I've set the date to 7000 as you can see and I'm about to start the Horde. And if you enjoyed this video, why not hit that like button? And consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really does help me out and it's free. Especially the like, of course. The spooky time begins as the Blood Moon Horde rolls in. Or sort of moves in. Or whatever you want to call it. So let's see. Where are the zombies here? They're coming from that side. A little bit up there. All right. That's all right. Oh, okay. First thing is not really good. There are bashing things here. Okay, I wonder why that is. They're rolling down here, but they seem to be want to go through here. Ah, huh. um, that's of course not really what we want. That is really peculiar. Okay, so let's uh, quickly see what could have been causing this. Okay, so. Okay, they are trying to get through there. Is it because I'm too far away? Let's see if I open up here. Is that going to cause them to want to move in? Okay, now they do. Okay, so now they are coming in. I, I Weird. Uh, maybe they didn't like the door. That's a bit more dangerous though, because it does allow them to potentially crowd in here. Ooh. Uh, we don't necessarily want that. What happens if I close it? That was an issue last time, but for some reason it is an issue this time. They come down. Okay, let's do this. Let's turn off this switch, see if that helps. Uh, are they... No, now they're coming back. So it seems to be something about the door. Okay, so uh, let's do this then. Let's... Uh, do a slightly e smaller door. This one, not an upgraded one. Assuming this was an upgraded one. Like that. Does this make a difference? Again, the main thing is that we want to have them coming through the front. If they don't, then that's obviously... Okay, that one is... Oh, shit! Right! Um, no, that's not what we want. A uh, closed door, they decide to go through there. That's what someone was highlighting, but let's say fine. We do that then. I haven't upgraded all these to steel. Maybe I should have because that's obviously... Uh, oh. Actually, why are they going here? That's just going to drop them straight down. Okay. Okay, there seemed to be an issue with actually having these uh, sort of crenellations in there. It seems that that is causing a problem with the pathing. So as soon as I took those out, no problem at all. So uh, 
Yeah, I wonder why. I guess it's because of the height difference that it actually cares about. So that was a bust. So having all this uh, didn't actually make it better, actually make it worse. So we're going to have to rely on these ones rather than on the crenellations to slow them down. It's one of those things that the game probably, if I... If you have it maybe further down or something, like if I have something going down, maybe that would help it. Because it's the, the zombies trying to get on the same uh, vertical level as the player, and I think that's why they decided, that, hey, if I come in here, I am much better off, and that's, yeah, that's not going to work. And oh boy, is this causing me a lot of headaches. So I have, to, like I said, this one was changed. I also had to steal up here. I also had to steal up up here on the side because they decided that once they were up here, going through here on the side, and then coming in through this little hole where I can replenish here, was a really good way. So I have had to steal up there as well. And let's see what happens here. Oh, painful! It's just so many zombies, and that just gives them so much actual headache. Did I turn off the zombies? No, no, I didn't. No, I did. Oh, I must have. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's just causing so much problems with uh, where they want to go because they sort of seem to block each other. So step by step. And this is why it's fun to do this in creative because you could imagine doing this when you're playing the game, which some people do and have told me that they have had these kind of problems. And yeah, then everything just falls down and that's not very fun. So, okay. So he's coming in here, right? They are doing what they should be. He's coming up here. And he's now right in front of me. He will be taken out. Good. This one, though, is going to be... Ooh, Forge. Uh, iron. Give me some iron quickly. Yes. Yeah, no, this one has to be taken out. Ooh. Whew. Okay, so you definitely have to actively defend here. These ones are all right, but they make it so far down. Fortunately, I do have this last, uh, let's see here, and he does uh, so massive damage. I wonder if I should uh, turn this into, and let's do this, uh, if I should turn this into just, let's do this. Oh. Come on. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Woo. Okay, now that one should, okay, that should be a little bit easier. And hopefully they are still going that way. So let's see if I do like that. I should be, yeah, I can. This works all right to shoot. I just have to be careful so I don't actually snipe a demolisher. By standing here probably and just doing some shooting will help to just lessen the pressure that is coming on the front. And actually it doesn't take that much bullets because um, it's, it should be penetrating a bunch of the zombies, if up to five or something, and using armor piercing, even the, oh, see, him might be an issue. Oh, and repairing, uh, well, reloading at the wrong time, and let's shoot a little bit, take them out. Is he coming up here? No, I can easily. Okay, so that works all right. That should help because uh, by the time um, they make it up there, right? Reload, 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 reload. I'm sorry, reload. Repair, rather. Oh, this is... Oh, no, this is so... Oh. And... Do not... Yes. Is he on the side here? If he is, I actually can shoot him. Um... And I probably have to do that so that it doesn't destroy the hatch. But now with all these reinforcements... Oh, why is he going the wrong way? Having reinforced everything like this, it seems to really help. Because now they're at least going the correct way. The dart traps are still maintaining pretty alright. We are one hour in, which is acceptable. You do have to go and do some repairs. Uh, but the more I stand here, I notice actually the pressure is definitely less. Because you deal quite a lot of damage with a sniper when you're having so many people just in a line. That as long as you can take out sort of the heavies. Then that basically means that the blade traps can take care of a bunch of the other ones. As well as with the dart tra uh, sorry, blade traps and dart traps together. So let's see, this one is alright. This one is fine. Nope. It's mostly demolishes, maybe cops as well to some degree. 
and taking him like this. Yep. All right. Come back here. Oh, now he is dead. And do that. I haven't had any cops actually come here vomit. Uh, maybe they're having a problem looking through this small area. I think they should be able to actually see me if they really want to. But uh, it, as long as I keep shooting here and the blade traps are doing theirs, I think we should be okay. See, the pressure is much less here, but it's basically because I'm shooting. If I'm not shooting, I don't think we have enough traps to actually be able to whittle down 64 in one go. Ooh, that one you have to be really careful about. Because you don't want to have these ones set off. Oh, but it looks really good when it's right there in front. No, he's dead. Woo! Just have to be really careful. And if he does end up right in front here, I can easily, relatively easily, just switch and uh, shoot him in the face there. See? A little bit of shots here. Take them out. And uh, yeah, see that experience. Look at that experience. A little bit of lull in the action. Comes another demolisher. Get some headshots. And that really helps to take him down because uh, the demolishers have so much hit points that if you just whittle them down, even half does a major difference for the dart traps and any of the blade traps to actually take him out. And there my game decided that way too much things happening in one go again. Oh, that's a huge problem. Uh, yet another horde is starting here, or continuing rather. Really worrying that the game is uh, crashing or freezing up. It's almost as if the AI pathing thread or something is locking up because I was hearing uh, music in the background even when that happened. And it's not an outright crash, but it definitely freezes up and it seems to have to do with when the zombie started because when I turned off the zombies it was fine and then when I restarted the zombie AI it basically started freezing and the same thing when I started the blood moon hold a few times that's when it started breaking so it's something to do with that uh, pathing thread or AI thread I suspect which is a little bit of a worrying thing okay he get him out and take him out as well and that's uh, more of a problem actually than the, the amount of zombies I'm having here. These ones are definitely manageable. I mean, they're they're coming up here. They're doing a little bit of damage to this one, which is not too bad. A little bit of damage here, not actually too bad. Uh, that one is fine. I can loot here. There's actually tons of loot. Ooh, look at this amount of loot. Not that you necessarily have time to actually repair while this is happening if you're just one person if you're two people it would be a lot easier because one person could go and uh, do some repairs and do some looting where the other one was actually going ahead and doing the shooting here because i think shooting here is is the way to go when you have such a narrow area you need some way to help to take the pressure off because you simply don't have enough traps I'm going to see what happens just for a while if I don't actively defend and oh <laughs> look at all these zombies coming in wow Yep. I mean, they do get mowed down when they get here. Eventually. Oh, he's now sh uh, attacking me here. It might be alright, actually. It just means that uh, there's a lot more damage being taken on the blade traps up here. Still manageable, though. But just stand here. So let me do that. Let me stand here about an hour or something and just see the zombies come in and see if that causes any problems. Yep, eventually you do get a problem here. Oh, look at all these. It's just too much pressure in the front that uh, this the, the traps are not even now. You see, looking at all these, there are a lot of radiated ones, and the the, the dart traps I have on the side, I just have a major problem taking care of that many radiated as uh, zombies that are just right in front of here. And once you start getting the and stuff like that, they can take out. And let's see if I can get some headshots here. Oh, now they, oh yeah, see now they took this one out. It seemed like there was some glitch in this area. I had to destroy a few blocks below and the blocks wouldn't actually vanish. So yeah, some glitch that was occurring there. But you see the, the, the problem here, that when you have way too much here, the... Okay, let me go out of the god mode there. Uh, the problem that I end up with is that whatever I have here on the side, these uh, traps are not enough to prevent the crash again. 
Okay, a lot of crashes. I've stopped the Blood Moon Horde here. I mean, I think I've gotten all the information I needed as far as how it would actually work. So, ooh, what have we learned? Well, having a straight way in is the way to go. Having these ones really does help slow them down. They do degrade though. So you do have to have, it's like this one doesn't work anymore. And this is when I would be able to turn on the second one. That was not the main problem though. Uh, what I suspect is happening though is that this area is just too small. So when it's having 64 concurrent zombies, the game base basically tries to path all over so they try to go through the the mountain here and uh, as soon as I started uh, putting up a little bit easier way for them to get in uh, they started to go down here but then they actually wanted to go in here because they thought hey if I get through here that's definitely better than going through here because all of us can't fit here and uh, then they go in here and now when I did that up to steel then they decided that hey uh, what if I go through here instead and again it's just it just seems to throw their AI pathing all over the place as it's trying to sort of cope with where it can actually go. I wonder why, and also having the door seems to be worse than having a hatch. A hatch definitely doesn't seem to block them as much. You could have, for instance, a pole, but that doesn't allow you to go in and out. Now, the changes with being able to loot here seems to work really well. Being able to repair from the from the side, perfect. It allowed me to do that multiple times. Oh, I think one got destroyed. Really weird. I didn't see how that happened, but one got destroyed. I could. Uh, obviously replace that anyway i showed you that the last time when i built this this base so you can replace them fairly easily but there's just not enough dart traps and everything on the front and on the back to be able to take them out you see they're going down slowly but there's just not enough damage output to deal with 64 concurrent until I actually end up standing here myself. If I stand here myself and I'm doing my shooting, that helped. That helped tremendously because it meant that very few zombies actually made it up to this spot. And the few that did, the traps and everything, the dart traps on the side could take care of them without a lot of problems. But if I was not shooting myself, then they just move all the way up here. You get a bunch of radiated, then you start getting demolishers and it just just breaks through and you have a bad day so if you're really active at defending this type of base would work but what I'm more concerned about is actually not the fact that the base has some minor problems but the fact that the game is locking up and crashing actually not necessarily crashing but it's freezing up entirely which implies that there's something happened it's going into I was tracking my CPU is still running and of course it hasn't crashed and the my windows is still is still running fine but it's something in the game that is locking up maybe getting into a loop which simply can't cope with all those zombies trying to get somewhere and that's actually more for concern have you had those issues when you've been playing with 64 concurrent this is the first time out of all my day 7064 concurrent uh, insane difficulty horse that, that i've had the zombie actually freezing up and it's probably because of the i guess the complexity of being inside a mountain where there's just so many options for him to get to because they literally can go anywhere here and try to get through they can go from the top they can go from the side they you know they prefer to go from the front but they could go anywhere else and maybe there are just too many options for the zombies to actually effectively path and once it starts repathing too many at one go for instance when something changes or something is blocking because there's too many zombies in the way maybe that's when it starts to just fall down so if you don't have too many concurrent zombies, you know, whether it's 60 and 32, whatever, I don't know where the threshold is going to be. 64 seems to be too much for me, at least. I'm not sure my CPU is handling it, but it's something in the game that is not. But what do you think? What's your feedback? Well, leave a like, leave a subscribe, and let me know in the comment section below what you think I could have done differently or what your experience is. Have you had these kind of crashes that are keeping played up? I've probably had 10 crashes today over and over again, and they seem to really be related to the AI because disable the AI, no problem, re-enable it, bam, things start falling down. But anyway, that's it. Almost 4 a.m., even though I, of course, I have disabled the horde. I'll see you again. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.